Stan Jibalisco here. <clears throat> I am going to do another experiment with a capacitor, an electrolytic capacitor, which you see right there. Right there. 1000 microfarads rated at 35 volts. A 6 volt lantern battery, or quote, 6 volts, unquote. It's a little more. And a digital voltmeter. Now, in the previous experiment, I used a uh, low budget analog voltmeter, which displayed a low enough internal resistance so as to discharge the capacitor at a noticeable rate. Right now the capacitor is discharged, but it's easy to charge up very quickly. Now I have the meter set at a 600 volt setting, so this is rounding to the nearest volt, right up between 6 and 7 volts. But notice that it's remaining pretty much constant. Let's switch down now to the 200 volt scale, which gives us an additional uh, order of magnitude of accuracy. We can see that the voltage is approximately 6.3 volts. Now notice that I do not have the battery connected to the capacitor. The capacitor is providing this voltage and the meter is holding constant which indicates that this particular meter has a much higher internal resistance than the other one did. Let's go down to another level of accuracy. This is the 0 to 20 volt DC scale. It shows 6.27 volts and it's holding pretty much constant. Now it's down to 6.26, but as you can well imagine, this video would have to be awfully long in order for this voltage across this capacitor to decline to 2 or 1 or near 0 volts uh, as it did in the previous experiment even during the time that we made uh, the video. So we can see that the voltage is declining indicating that there is some resistance in the system. How much is in the capacitor and how much in the meter is hard to say but this uh, should provide an important lesson. If you want to measure the voltage in a circuit and you don't want the meter to disturb the operation of the circuit, it's important that the voltmeter have as high an internal resistance as possible. So in sensitive electronic applications, this digital voltmeter would be far superior to the analog meter. The analog meter would be adequate to measure, say, the voltage across a battery like this where a little bit of internal resistance, or should I say a non-infinite internal resistance, can be tolerated. But in an electronic application, you would want to use a more uh, high quality voltmeter such as this one, high quality simply meaning that it that it costs more, it has more options, and it can also provide a much more accurate display and it's much easier to read too, as you might have gathered. The uh, disadvantage of a digital meter is that you can't actually watch a decrement or you can't very easily obser uh, observe rapidly fluctuating values. Uh, you can see the numbers change, but you can't really watch a needle go up and down, which is sometimes a good thing to have in a meter. Anyway, if we discharge this capacitor, I wonder, just curious what will happen if I touch the terminals of the capacitor with my fingers. I've moistened my fingers by licking them. Now you can see it's declining a little faster. That's because of the internal resistance of my hand. You can actually watch it decline considerably more quickly. And of course, if we really want to get rid of the charge on it, we can just short it out. Well, it didn't quite lose it all, did it? Now it's gone, essentially, for all intents and purposes. It is gone. Hope you enjoyed this. Maybe I learned something. 
See you later.